hi 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 um how you doing i'm coming at you kind of late with this one another sort of uh free willing holding in my hand type of podcast podcast here um well for one though i am in frame so that's good um but yeah, my live stream got cut off last week, so I could not finish the live episode, and I didn't really want to risk that happening again for this part two of last week's live stream, uh, because, you know, I, I wouldn't have just wanted to record like an extra ten minutes or so. Like, I would have hated to have been cut off at the last ten minute mark or something, you know. Um, and it actually cut me off you know youtube themselves that's what my notice said that youtube cut me off um probably because i said the word gay or something like that um um <laughs> so i don't know but but if i'm not close enough for you already um we uh Yes, me and my 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 whole cast here, uh, as you can see, we're uh... <laughs> or well, I guess it's we. You're here with me, right? <laughs> right, you're here with me, aren't you? Um, so you know, we left off in uh, a a place where it just so happened that uh, I was actually at the crossroads between. Um, actors here, you know, uh, I was just getting to more of the Michelle Yeoh incorporation of this Jackie Chan Michelle Yeoh special, and that was with Police Story, even though there is a movie that I'm going to go back in time for in a few minutes now, a few moments now, um, you know, to give a bit more to, uh, Michelle, Yo Yo Michelle, um, so, yeah, if, um, I guess, you know, I sh probably should have looked at, um, my podcast. Hopefully that also isn't just scratching the mic. It probably was, um, but <laughs> I've got to look at the end of, uh, like the last episode of the podcast. So, um, it, I don't know exactly what point I left off at, what I was cut off on, but, I do really like the dynamic between Jackie and Michelle. I do wish that there was more uh, between them. I know that they do appear in a couple more movies together, but it's it's small roles, you know, or one of them is the lead and the other one's just a cameo type of thing. I, I would have liked a lot more movies with them together. And again, you see Michelle Yeoh doing some crazy shit, uh, and she was a self-trained person i just trained on set practically it's insane the shit that she is pulling off so if we go back a little bit uh, we go back a couple years i think the same year as police story 2 um royal warriors came out that title referring to people of the law i imagine uh, as it's like a you know, uh, crime thriller, cop-focused action film. It's quite brutal, too. It starts out like an episode of Power Rangers, and then it just goes completely off the rails. Um, but Michelle Yeoh was pretty cool in that one. She was, um, legit. To <laughs> she was, I mean, yeah, she, you know, she, um... She was definitely kind of picking up speed as a actor at that time. Definitely kind of working out the kinks in her performance. Um, strictly with with just being able to mix like uh, the charisma with the martial arts. You know, it's something that all of these great martial artist actors have faced. Royal Warriors was like her second fucking movie or something. So obviously she's still working out the kinks a little bit, but she's still great to watch. She pulls off plenty of awesome stunts in that film too, and there's plenty of uh, practical action sequences and big spectacle in moments where, again, the, the start of the movie feels like it's, it's like going to be a made-for-TV thing, and then it gets completely... 
completely, completely wild. Uh, <laughs> just, yeah, in a matter of like 20 minutes into the movie, not even. Uh, even still, like the immediate first scene is really fun. It's a really fun and well choreographed action scene. It just pl takes place in like the middle of a park, like the same way a lot of Mighty Morphin episodes are. So it's like, <laughs> all right, well, I guess we're just out here. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, there's not much to say about that one. It's an extremely pulpy uh, 80s action film. It definitely gives you its bang, be your bang for your buck, like with that kind of movie, especially if you are a fan of that, you know, um, so, Royal Warriors, I do highly suggest that movie, um, and now, you know, we, we get into two that, um, I love, I love very much, I've kind of talked about one of these a good bit already, so, I'll try to spin some interesting perspectives here, but, that's in a moment. That's is, is in a moment. I have actually talked about both of these already, but I have not really talked about Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon as a film much. Um, <clears throat> I think that that movie is uh, genuinely like magical, you know, and kind of like a almost like an old Disney way. If like when you're watching it, it really is just like you're in this other world and you're you're fully there in the experience um the like wire work martial art work it is insane crouching tiger hidden dragon is one of the movies even a drunken master as well honestly um two sets of films or uh i guess three counting both drunken masters but like these films to me are a crouching tiger and then uh, another Hong Kong film that is unrelated to this episode currently, but I will probably talk about it someday, Shaolin Soccer. Uh, Crouching Tiger and Shaolin Soccer, to me, both feel like, um, you know, the closest thing that's been done to like, or I should say the... I barely even get into my point. The, 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 um, the, I, I, I'm going to leave you in suspense with all these words that I preface before my points. Um, as you could tell, I'm a great host for a podcast. Um, essentially, Crouching Tiger is one of the films that when I see it, I'm like, not only is this just amazing in its own right, but this gives me hope for like a Dragon Ball Z movie one day, or at least something in that style, you know? Um, Cause it's amazing. I mean, they're just flying all over the place in the fucking movie. And it's fairly swift, it's pretty smooth. Um, and it's also just pretty funny, you know, uh, in certain moments. It's definitely kind of like a drama by means of like, more so that it just kind of, it, it does take itself seriously for most of the time. It's not necessarily sad or anything until toward the end. Um, it, it has sad moments, but it really is everything, you know, it has tinges of everything. It's hilarious in moments. Um, it, the, the spectacle is huge in some moments, in other moments it's very intimate and romantic. It's sad. Um, what other things are in movies? I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's not like a noir thriller or whatever the fuck. But it really does kind of give you, like, so much. Um, so, a Crouching Tiger, King Dragon, I loved. Criterion Channel uh, has it streaming this month. I think it was last month it was streaming. Yeah, yeah definitely streaming last month as well. Um... And just getting to see it in 4K is brilliant. I'm sure the theater that I got to see it in was also screening it in 4K, um, which was brilliant to see. I mean, that was part of why it felt so magical to me in the first place is seeing it on the big screen like that wowed me beyond belief. 
honestly. I, I also um, am going to apologize now, as this is an episode where I've kept you very close. But uh, I, I just happened to spend like three seconds in the sun today in the uh, ye old ye, ye states. So, um, yeah, that's enough to, to leave me drenched in sweat. And uh, the humidity will carry over into most rooms of your house, especially if they're not insulated down here in the ye, ye old south. So... I'm sorry that I'm throwing you close to a body that is rather sweaty, but it's just the way it's gotta be, okay? For now, for now. These episodes will go back to normal soon, although there will be a good bit of change-ups to how things happen uh, around here. As in, not a change at all to how things happen, just a change of location, but... I'm going to try to pre-record as many episodes as I can here just to, um, you know, lock this room, this version of the lab, this incarnation that I hold so many dear memories within. But I will be moving into a new incarnation of the lab, a, a whole new house, uh, a tiny house even that is pretty much entirely just going to be a lab so um believe me none of this will stop um but again great memories held here um i do the podcast in here to begin with because uh we made our first movie in here trey and caleb and i previous guests um and it also just is the movie, uh, the movie, it's the room where I do all my movie watching. Um, and this is also just the room where kind of all the creativity happens too. So it's like, why not? Why not doing it here? Um, <laughs> but I am not sitting once again, just because I'm not tripoded today. I'm keeping the tone fairly consistent of the last part of this episode, even though it's pre-recorded, I'm still just kind of holding the camera, walking around, keeping it uh, a, little, a little extra neurotic, you know? Um, so, anyway, enough of that uh, little side tangent slash lore dump. Um, Crouching Tiger actually is kind of uh, like good, good lore dump of a movie, but it, 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 I actually wish there was more. I wish it was like... I'm sure there's so much, like, cultural and, like, legend and folklore type of context that I'm missing um, with Crouching Tiger, but I would love... That that movie could be, like, a good, like, 15 minutes longer at least. I feel that would be my one flaw with it is that I would like more. I don't necessarily think it's underdeveloped. It just, for how much it shows you, it really does kind of burst through all of its ideas very quickly and all of its characters and the backstories. It, it, I mean, yeah, it must clearly be based on on very well-known characters or archetypes or whatever that um, to the people who understand the context, it's just like not really a continuing in the adventures of type of deal, but the context is that they can kind of just get into the meat of um, this type of story, you know, and they do. They really do. I love it. Um, Michelle Yeoh is great in the film. She has some of the coolest fucking action scenes. I mean, just ever, period, in this movie. All of them kind of are in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Michelle gets her fair share. Um, she's not the main character of this movie. There are kind of a few. Um, I don't. Re she's like right on that line of like a one of the main characters to like most important. Oh well, and, and like yeah, on the line of like main and supporting and supporting character. You know, right now, towing towing the bridge, as it were, and um, she for me like you know. Once 
her first fight scene starts even, uh, which is just fairly simple. It's just giving you a taste of the the degree of movement that you're going to see in this film. But, but again, all the amazing wire work, it's just like, oh, I, like I felt uh, just surges of electricity through me. Just, just a simple fight in like a very dark, you know, cobblestone, more, more, more like a stone brick type of area. That, um, yeah, yeah, stone brick. Um, <clears throat> and the the fight is uh, simple but beautiful. I love it. I love it. I love it to death. Um, and I mean, that's just the beginning, you know. I, I, I always kind of go back and forth on here between just like, talking about whole movies and then not just doing very vague reviews of the films I mentioned. Um, and I have only seen Crouching Tiger about, you know, two times, really one time for real at the theater and just in another time by proxy, just happening to come across someone else who was watching it. It's like, oh, okay. All right, you know, throwing it a uh, little bit of it on, you know, just to, just to, just to see pieces, you know, you know what I mean, you know what I mean, you, 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 just, just to get those little fight scenes, you know, just to get those little, those little parts of the flavor. So, I'm giving this one a nine out of ten. Um, yeah, it's 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 pretty great. It's a classic. Another banger from the year 2000. An Ang Lee banger as well. Um, I, yeah, I don't know as much about, like, the director of, like, P Police Story 3 and, um, you know, Royal Warriors, so I did not go as much into those films, uh, in that regard, but, and I mean, I'm not, like, an Ang Lee expert either, necessarily, but, uh, very much worth mentioning that, yes... He also is uh, bearing the weight of the film on his shoulders here, and he pulls off something very, very, very magical. Uh, I deeply, deeply respect this film, and again, I cherish my experience with it, um, and it is sweaty in here, um, kind of like the sweaty desert um, that they spend a considerable amount of time in the film sort of roaming through it's it's all you know almost westerny in a way for a moment as well another example of the various things this film gives you it's great i love it um and now 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 oh well actually okay before i get into that other okay. Shall go. Uh, before I get into that movie, um, that the spark you can already tell which movie I'm talking about. Um, I will also briefly mention a film that I watched before I consciously knew who Michelle Yeoh was. Um, so now I have to rewatch it, not just because it's a cool movie, but to be like, there she is. Um, and that is Danny Boyle's sunshine um that is a really cool horror film um which is uh you know essentially uh, sets its horror around the sun which is something that surprisingly not a lot of horror films have based or, or sci-fi horror not a lot of that has based itself around the horrors of uh, stars essentially um, you know, it's usually just about, like, aliens, or space zombie aliens, <laughs> so, <laughs> or space politics sometimes, sometimes it's space politics, and that, sometimes that works, sometimes that doesn't, um, and Sun Sunshine was just really cool, you know, really tense, uh, Alien did a, did a great thing for... The, the for sci-fi for I don't, I don't, it, it didn't like create sci-fi horror or anything that existed pre-hand because you had the uh, you know the, the thing essentially the old the thing and other examples but it certainly made it like 
really palpable. Like if you can, if you can get that shit to work, there, there is just nothing else like it. Because you know, so much of horror, horror is uh, what you don't understand. Your your mind uh, just desperately trying to create um, explanations for things that are just bigger than you and just the, the not even, it just surrounding you with no you know darkness emptiness and oh what's out there what is it what is it um what's that crack in the woods what's that that breathing what is that there um that at least is a aspect of horror anyway and um for for the film to <laughs> Take it. Oh, well, I kind of lost my point there a little bit. A little bit. I think I a little bit lost my point there. But it was pretty much just that. Um, the film Sunshine, Danny Boyle Sunshine, does a great job of... Uh, oh, yes, just the, just the fact that so much horror, you know, if it's based in the unknown, the unknown can be so big, so perplexing. The sun is that eight million fold so um if that's the right way to use that expression so um it's it is it just there you know it's it's not like the greatest movie or any, anything i've seen i've seen oh my god it's not the greatest movie ever made and that's not an insult not every movie there really isn't a greatest movie ever made um but it was cool and uh, I wish I remember, I can kind of guess which part Michelle wo Yo was, um, but I really only remember like Killian Murphy. I think Michelle Yo was like the other one who sir or well, <laughs> not a lot of people have seen Sunshine, so, uh, spoilers, uh, but, uh, or well, no, actually, never mind, I think I was, I was saying a wrong detail anyway, so I didn't spoil anything, actually, because... I was remembering an earlier part of the movie as the end. So yeah, never mind, I didn't spoil anything. We're good. Um Yeah. Uh really cool little film. Again, wish I remembered which part Michelle Yo was. I think I do, but even still glad that she's in there. So, um the next film that I would like to discuss that I have already discussed uh, and have already discussed before that and I have already discussed me already discussing this film but once again I will mention <laughs> where the fuck where is it where is it where is it where is it <laughs> Everything everywhere at once starring uh, Michelle Yeoh in stores now go buy it um it is a good film um what can I tell you this time that's different well uh, I actually had not seen the film uh, since it was in theaters. I saw it twice when it was in theaters. And then I pre-ordered the Blu-ray. And I have not watched it since. And last time I reported to you, I had not seen the movie again a third time. But now. But now I have. And for when I showed it to my little brother, it was my first time uh, showing it to someone, knowing what it is. I went to see it with a friend, and then I saw it alone, and now I've gotten to show it to someone, and sort of watch them watch it, and, uh, and not only did they have as visceral, the emotional reaction to the film as I had, um, in my first time watching the film, but also... Once again, I also was just there, right there with him, just very much caught up in the emotions of the film. Once again, after it's nearly been a year, and I, it still hits. It just the emotional potence is true, 
the heart is genuine so it's really not gonna fade away you know even if maybe over time the schmaltziness of it comes off cornier than it does now and it, and it even does come off corny but like it knows it's corny and that's okay um because that's just how these moments are these genuine moments of heart you know they are kind of corny and cringe but that that's life brother you know what i mean <laughs> Life is corny and cringe sometimes. Um, and everything everywhere all at once really does just kind of capture, capture so much uh, about uh, what I love about movies, just period. Um, once again, I, I, I feel like I've probably mentioned this before, the uh, beautiful Chungking Express dialed sequences, which are... Um, some more Hong Kong, another Hong Kong classic, at least that I will be getting into at some point. It's a little tease there for you. Um, <laughs> I adore this film very much. Um, as I've said before, multiple times, but it's great and it deserved, uh, most of the wins. I guess I can talk about that too. The, the Oscars reception, which, you know, I... I did not expect it uh, to get any nominations. I thought it was going to get uh, ignored by the Academy. I mean, you know, I still don't really put much stake in the Academy after this, but it's like, oh, okay, you didn't ignore the type of movie that you usually always ignore. They still kind of did by proxy, too, because Tar got nothing. Um, Banshees of Inisherin got nothing. These movies were nominated, but, like, Decision to Leave wasn't even nominated. And these are three of the best movies of 2022 in a year. That was amazing. Those are three of the best, no doubt. Uh, and I do think Everything Everywhere is also up there. Uh, but there were there were a couple awards where it's like... You could have given that. Well, uh, really, there was just one that Everything Everywhere got. The other uh, awards that probably should have gone to the films I mentioned were snubbed. Um, those were the awards that went to, like, the old Quiet on the Western Front, uh, Netflix remake. <laughs> it literally has blah, fucking music, and it won Best Score instead of Babylon, because Babylon is an anti-Hollywood movie. Nice, uh, you know, so yeah, I still find plenty of valid reasons to not like the Oscars, but there were some dubs, um... A not everything everywhere dub would definitely be the Brendan Fraser win, but yeah, Tehe Kwan's speech was absolutely beautiful, was so brilliant, um, and he really is the heart of everything everywhere all at once to me. You know, Michelle Yeoh's the body, um, carrying at least, uh, yeah, carrying the plot. You know, carrying the concept, carrying the idea. She's rarely not there. She's she is. Uh, you know, not just the main character, but it really is all about her and all these various hers and everything. And um, it's just, yeah, so, so beautiful, so funny, so fun. I mean, I was saying Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon gives you everything. But as me and thousands of people have already said, everything, everywhere, all at once really does give you everything the only thing everything everywhere shouldn't have got uh was jamie lee curtis's oscar it's very much just like a sorry we've never recognized you type of award <laughs> you could have even given that same award best supporting actress to the same movie uh stephanie shu um i believe it's stephanie she she is the is the daughter in everything everywhere and um she even i would have been more happy if she had gotten best actress it kind of like every other choice for best supporting actress i mean uh because best actress went to michelle yo and i am i mostly concur with that even though kate blanchett really was uh not just the best actress performance purely from a acting standpoint because there is a different perspective uh 
of performance with Michelle and everything everywhere bringing in the action to it and everything um but Kate Blanchett uh definitely was a powerhouse in tar uh you know but I'm, I'm not upset with Michelle Yeoh getting the Oscar because I do also think that she was great in the film Kei Hei Kwan was probably my favorite um performance in the film uh, but Michelle Yeoh was great. Again, Best Actress of the Year. It's debatable, especially when Kate Blanchett's performance in Tar, I would just call one of the best year, period. Um, Michelle Yeoh and Everything Everywhere, I could call one of the most fun of the year, for, for sure. I could, I could say that. Um, not necessarily disappointing, for sure. She definitely has a, you know, a career of amazing films, but at that point, you might as well have just given her the same award that they gave to Jackie Chan, you know, the, uh, the Lifetime Achievement Award. Um, so, again, though, I'm not really, I've been out of shape about it, whatever. It's the, again, it's the Oscars. I, I don't really care. Um, <laughs> Uh, I mean, what else did they win, though? Because the, the one thing I do care about is they will get, you know, some good recognition out of this, certainly. And, um, I was checking to see if I'd slice my toenail off earlier. I think I might have a little bit, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> go back into the footage and look for the part where I am talking and then just, uh, uh, and just have a little stutter. Go back about five, ten minutes, you'll find it. Uh, you're a smart guy. I know you can do it. Um, but yeah, I mean, editing was, uh, an award that everything everywhere definitely deserved. I'm really glad it got that. Um, and, uh, I mean, who fucking cares about these Oscar awards that already fucking happened? Who fucking cares? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? So, with that said, with the Oscars in mind, and with the silly little thing that Jackie Chan said to Michelle Yeoh about everything everywhere, the little joke saying, hey, your boys cast me first in it, well, it would have been fun to see him in that role. I do think everything everywhere is a little bit more interesting with the mother daughter dynamic really just the fact that it is um about like just michelle yo the person that she i mean it's not about her but the person that she is playing just a older malaysian woman like we don't usually see that in film really like in I mean, um, american False blockbuster styled films. Obviously, it's not really a blockbuster, but it has that feeling. For A24, definitely a blockbuster. <laughs> um, so, there is that. But with that Jackie Chan joke mentioned, I will bring up the final thing here. Uh, even though we are up to date in the canon, I mean, uh, Jackie Chan's going to be in the new. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie is Master Splinter. That's cool, but Jackie Chan's old animation, aka Jackie Chan, the animated series, I believe it is aptly called. Um, I another. It's another banger. You know, same year Michelle Yeoh was doing. Um, fucking Crouching Tiger, sorry, I was working on something a little bit, um, doing a bit of work on the sign, um, <laughs> as, um, Shoya was doing Crouching Tiger, Jackie Chan was filming very silly little bits of him in front of a green screen going, um, <laughs> And, uh, and then that went into his cartoon, Jackie Chan Adventures. Um, and I have a lot of fond memories of it from my childhood. I decided to watch some of it again. I watched uh, a nice little handful of episodes, like five or six episodes, something like that. I had fun. I was having fun with it. I could easily see myself watching more. It is a fun show. Um, you know, like the backgrounds are so... 
They clearly went out of their way to make the backgrounds look, you know, to just spend the least amount of time on the backgrounds intentionally, make them look like, I don't know, I don't even know what, like old jazz art that's just very scribbly. And uh, they put all the animation to just the really smooth ass action because the the action and choreography in the cartoon is fantastic. This it's not the only cartoon to have amazing fight choreography, but you don't see that happen all the time, you know. Um, in certain anime, you see it. You definitely see it more now. Naruto has some. When I was growing up, Batman Beyond kind of had some cool uh, choreography. You know, Batman Beyond was always very agile. And that's exactly how uh, Jackie Chan feels. It's great. I'm sure Jackie Chan filmed uh, moves and sent them over. Um, so, <laughs> I think that is a lot of fun. Everyone needs their own end credits theme by Weedus, like the one in Jackie Chan Adventures, which for one, the fact that the band's name is Weedus, number one, already off to a great start. Number two, didn't realize they were the I'm a teenage dirtbag baby band. Even better. Number three, it's like every episode of the show ends with like a sequence where Jackie Chan is just like on a treadmill and you just hear the <laughs> the the voice actress for his niece in the show. She goes, hey, Jackie, and asks a, a question that uh, like a mail in question from a, a fan. And uh, he's just like, oh, I, I love cartoons. I made a cartoon so the kids could grow up and then they see my movies and I show my kids and my grandkids and I say, that's your father, that's your grandfather. I love cartoons. Freeze frame on that and then instantly, not even, not even a breath apart, you cut to fucking the most like glorious pop punk rock you're the coolest dude ever jackie chan type theme song it's beautiful everyone needs their own version of this theme song about themselves to play always you need that in your life and so with that i think i'm gonna cut it here folks thank you so much for watching these will probably go back to normal soon. I think I am going to, if it's not this week, because I am going to be caught up with a lot of work. So before I move, because that is what's happening, as I've stated, I will, you know, I will try to uh, pre-record as many of these as I can, um, because there are a couple more guests, some of my friends from in this area that I'd like to have on the podcast. Um... There is uh, a film that a commenter, a.k.a. my uncle, uh, recommended. And, uh, you know, um, when the fan, no, no plural, when the fan asks you uh, to talk about a film, you go, yeah, why not? So, and I also haven't seen that movie in forever, so it gives me an excuse. So that's probably what's going to come next, you guys. Just stick around and wait, okay? Come back soon for Hype Nation, y'all.